All right, guys, I am going to go ahead and get started. Um, let's open up. Let's start start by praying real quick. Father, we just, we just love you. We thank you for tonight, God. We thank you for um, the opportunity we have to gather and to train in your name, even though we're, we're distanced from each other, God. And we pray that you'd continue to use us in this season. You'd continue to use us in the area of evangelism, that you would give us fresh and bright ideas on how we could reach the communities around us, how the region around us. And Father, we just pray wisdom over the body of Christ right now. We pray that you would uh, you'd be present with us in this season, Jesus, and that we would trust you. And Father, we just pray that when all this comes to an end, there would be new and fresh dreams over each and every person who um, who's involved in this team, who's involved in evangelism, that there would be a fresh, fresh vision coming out of this season, God. We thank you. We love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What's up, guys? Thank you for jumping on. Um, we're going to jump right into it tonight. So um, the past couple weeks, we've talked a little bit about um, we've talked a little bit about evangelism and going. Um, we talked about why why we do evangelism, why we go. Um, tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about the servanthood of Jesus and uh, the example of Jesus. So. Um, first, I just want to, I just want to give you guys some practical things just to start off. Um, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people have never gone out and done something like evangelism. They haven't, um, approached somebody in a grocery store and asked them to pray for them or shared the gospel with them. Um, even though I think that should be a normal part of everyday Christianity is us sharing the gospel and loving people and loving the people in front of us, uh, you, you know, just, just simply loving the person in front of you is so important. It's so, so important for us to just stop and love the one, you know, love the person in front of you. That's the gospel. Share the gospel with them. Share love with them. So, so a few things, when we go out, a lot of times, you know, we're praying for other people and a lot of, a lot of people I know have never done something like that. So I just want to give you guys some practical, like real, just simple advice on what to do when you're going or if say you're going with the evangelism team maybe for the first time or maybe maybe you're just out and about and you want to share the gospel with somebody god put somebody on your heart just some practical easy things to do to make it a little easier so you have some direction in knowing what to do the first thing i would say is this you have to listen to the holy spirit when you go or when you're sharing the gospel with somebody listening to the holy spirit is so so important if we're willing to listen he'll guide us you know it's one you read john 14 through 16 and those chapters are all just foundational when you're in your understanding of the holy spirit and how he works and how he works in and through our lives and um if we're and one of the things the holy spirit is the holy spirit is a guide so we have to trust the holy spirit when we go when we're led, we have to listen. Most of you have probably had one time or another where you feel the Lord's like putting something on your heart for somebody in a store or when you're out, out and about or at work or something like that. The Holy Spirit's trying to speak to you and our job is just to be obedient. You know, sometimes sometimes we might look like fools. Like that's a reality. Like sometimes we might look like fools sharing the gospel because the gospel is foolishness to those who, who aren't believers. You know, that's what Paul says. The gospel is foolishness foolishness to them because they don't understand yet. They they haven't they haven't been brought into the reality of the gospel. To them it's foolishness. And sometimes we have to look like a fool for Jesus, but we have to be guided by the Holy Spirit understanding that he's trying to put people in your path. He's trying to put people in front of you so he can minister to them. And so one of one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is a guide. So we have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Um, if we want to see power, if we want to see him touch people, we have to lean into the Holy Spirit and trust the Holy Spirit. That is key in doing evangelism. I think sometimes we miss, we miss all that God has or all that God wants to do when we're ministering to people because we're not listening to the Holy Spirit. We're just kind of doing our thing, you know, but the Holy Spirit will guide us. Sometimes I, I think of even when we go out, like for my discipleship group, for example, you know, we we go to a city randomly at the end of the group, but we pray and ask God to guide us into what city we're going to. I know Joanne does similar things with, with her team. Where where should we go? What should we do? Those type of things. And what are we doing? We're leaning into the Holy Spirit for his guidance because He is he's our guide. We, we lean into him for his help. We trust him. We believe him and we want to be obedient to him. So that's number one is you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Um, 
we can't lean in our nat into our natural strength. We have to lean into the strength of the Lord and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I would say this too. Number two on that point, uh, on this point of just practical things you need to do to position yourself to see God move in evangelism is be present with presence. You know, be present with the presence of God. Understand that when you're out there, you're getting ready to go, you're getting ready to share the gospel with somebody. Understand this, that the presence of God is with you. I like to view it like this sometimes when I'm doing ministry, that like I'm literally holding the hand of the Holy Spirit and he's kind of leading, leading, if you will. You know, it's it's interesting that God just brought this back to remembrance. But one of the things that um, when he says be led by the Spirit, there's actually a very good word picture there um, biblically, and it, to be led is to like um, be led in a dance almost. Um, so, so if you you know you know dancing, I'm not a dancer, but but one person usually leads the dance. That's what it means to be led by the Holy Spirit in this journey, in this walk, where we're, we're, He's taking the lead and we're just kind of following. We're dancing with Him, but He's the leader in this dance. And so I would say for all of us, we have to be present with presence. Um, understand the Holy Spirit's there. Be aware of his presence when you're praying for people, when you're sharing the gospel with people. That is so important. And I'll tell you, it might seem simple. It might seem like, well, duh. But, but when you're aware of the presence, I'll tell you, I feel like I've seen God do more being aware of his presence there, almost like, almost like I'm leaning into him a little more. I'm having a little more faith that he's with me in this. And then all of a sudden I start, it seems like he starts moving more. He starts filling my mouth more. He starts moving in more powerful ways than if I was just going and just doing my thing. Um, we talked about this last week and another good point is to, you just got to be bold and step out. That's the biggest thing. You have to be bold and step out if you want to see God move when you're out sharing the gospel with people. You just have to be bold. You have to be willing to walk up to somebody. You have to be willing to talk to somebody. And sometimes you can find real easy, just practical ways of just finding the open door. Um, so that, that, that I'd say that'd be my next point is look for the open doors. God is always opening doors. If we're willing to say yes, God will always open a door for us. Whenever we go, it, it, it's amazing the people God will put in your path if you're just willing to say yes, but you have to you have to be aware of those open doors. Like, hey, this is this is an opportunity. Sometimes you'll be you'll be talking to somebody or asking them if you could pray for them, and they share something with you, and that is the open door you need to share the gospel. Uh, I I think of a few uh, you know maybe a month or two ago when we were in Columbus, um, there was this guy and and he openly admitted to getting ready to go smoke crack and stuff and. Um, but he felt the presence of God on the team I was with. And and I just started asking him, can I pray for you and stuff like that? And he rejected prayer, which was fine. Um, and he said, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Right there, I viewed that as this is my open door. Why are you not ready? Why are you not ready? And he goes on to tell me he was offended at God and stuff like that. And I was able to share the love of God and say, hey, man, I know you've been through a lot, but God loves you. And anytime you're ready to turn around and come back to Jesus, he's there waiting with open arms. And he was so touched. He, he, he told us, you know, I, I don't even want to go smoke crack right now. I just want to be I just want to be with you guys. I just want to hear more. You guys, he said, you guys have an aura around you. And and I just think that's so cool. But and I told him. That's the presence of God. So you look for these open doors and boom, it, you know, yeah, he wouldn't let me pray for him, but I did get to share the gospel with him and he was touched in a, in a, in a mighty way. I would say it was a really good encounter. And, and, you know, sometimes it's just about planting a seed and that's what we were doing. We were planting a seed that I believe God, God is going to send somebody else to water and he's going to bring the increase, you know, um, Sometimes a really good way to reach people is to create an open door. Uh, what, what do I mean by that? It sounds like almost like a forced blessing, right? Um, I wouldn't say that, but I'd say this. Um, creating an open door, we do this a lot on the evangelism team, is we take care packages out. We take bottles of water and Gatorade and we give them to homeless people and stuff like that. Sometimes we use that at 
those are just ways of creating an open door and it makes evangelism so much easier we're looking for the open door but sometimes getting that open door you know you you have to place something in their hands you have to just give them something to open up the conversation and make it easier on yourself make it easier on them and when we do that all of a sudden we see this open door to start talking to that person hey do you want a gatorade yeah i'd love one yes yeah, so, so what's your story you know and we start asking those questions and all of a sudden you're in a conversation with somebody which is a prime opportunity to share the gospel to share the gospel with people and to pray for them you know i told you guys last week i've learned doing evangelism for a long time that most people don't turn down prayer most people genuinely feel loved when somebody wants to pray with them sometimes they're a little weirded out yeah that's true but for the most part people people know they need prayer and they won't turn that down so sometimes you know we we, we got to create that open door in a way we use different things to create that open door but also i'd like to say this in that you know when we give a lunch or when we give a bottle of water or a gatorade don't even if the person won't let you talk to them won't let you share the gospel with them don't devalue the bottle of water you know to us it's just a bottle of water but in the kingdom it has significance understand that with me the bottle of water has significance in the kingdom and most of you guys might be like what is he talking about it, jesus says give a cup of cold water in my name and, and you'll be rewarded for it so we we understand this that that there's value in the cup of cold water in the cup in the bottle of cold water there's value in that just because it's a little thing doesn't mean it, it doesn't have eternal impact um sometimes that bottle of water is the seed that needs to be planted you know and it's not our job to bring the increase you know sometimes we want to see we want to see fruit we want to see these different things but it's not our job to bring bring the fruit it's our job to plant the seed and to water the seed so don't devalue the bottle of water or the lunch that you give somebody when you're out doing evangelism because even small things can have eternal impact jesus says give a cup of cold water in my name and it will have eternal value and we're doing this in the name of jesus we're doing it for jesus amen so sometimes we got to create the open door. You have to sometimes just asking somebody if you could pray for them. Hey, can I pray for you? That's that's practical. We do that all the time. But I would say this. I've seen a lot of people that they just pray for somebody and there's so much open door for them to share more, to share the gospel. And they don't take the opportunity because praying for somebody is easy, but then having a conversation with them to share the love of Jesus, or maybe they don't feel qualified, but I'm telling you, just just like God will fill your mouth for prayer, he'll fill your mouth with, with words of love and encouragement for that person. The gospel is simple. You don't have to be a Bible scholar and you don't have to complicate it. It's just about sharing the love of Christ. So look, when you're praying for people, be bold enough to ask them for prayer but at the same time, don't miss out on the opportunity to continue to have a conversation with that person. Don't miss out on the opportunity to share the gospel because sometimes we, we, prayer be, becomes a substitute for sharing the gospel. And, and God is giving us their ear for a short period of time and we have an opportunity. Um, so, and when, when, you're, when you ask them to pray for them, ask them ask them what they need prayer for sometimes that's the open door you need we talked about open doors creating an open door sometimes i've noticed a lot of times when i ask somebody if i could pray for them they'll talk they'll tell you you know about a broken family situation and or a broken childhood or a broken past and it gives you um it gives you the opportunity to i guess share the gospel you know what i mean it's like oh i can minister into that you know what i mean i i i can not only pray for that but i can minister into that even even joanne i just saw you put on there you know i've caught myself doing this you know a lot and i've caught myself doing it and then and then you look back and you go man i i should have taken a few more minutes to listen to that person and give them my ear and then shared with them just the simple love of jesus hey 
I know you've been through a rough situation, but Jesus loves you so much. The reason I'm standing in front of you right now is because God put me in front of you today to tell you he loves you. That's the gospel. It's that simple, you know, and that's not hard to do. It's really not. So, and then, and then I'd like to say a couple more things is love the person in front of you. Don't forget to love them. Sometimes we run into some real broken people. Sometimes we run into drug addicts and homeless people who who are a little out of their mind, to be honest. And, but don't, I guess what I want to say is don't not love them where they're at, you know, love the person in front of you that you're, they're in front of you, <coughs> sorry, for a reason. They're in front of you for a reason and you're called to love them. The last thing I'd like to say is, is we need to share testimonies. I love what Joanne does. She's been sharing testimonies on her page. If you haven't seen them, check them out. But here's the thing. Testimonies stir hunger and testimonies, you know, I always think of the passage. Um, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony will stir other people up to share the gospel It'll stir other people up to say, hey, if God can use that person in that way, he can use me in that way. It's, it's a spirit of prophecy. Testimonies are a spirit of prophecy, and they, prof they actually prophesy about what God wants to do in other people's lives. So, so we are literally um, prophesying faith into other people when we share the testimonies that Jesus has done. So, so I, I, I just want to say that don't. Don't devalue the testimony. Don't be prideful about it. But at the same time, share the testimonies of Jesus. Share the things he's, he's done because he wants people to know that he's good. You know, he wants people to see his goodness and his love and wants people to see that he still moves today. Those are just some practical things I want to throw by you guys real quick. And I'm just going to take a few more minutes on this. Um, but, but the number one thing, we've talked about why. We've talked about why we go. We talked about a few practical things, just doing evangelism. But I want, I want to share something with you guys real quick. And this has been on my heart all week for this night. Um, I'll say this. Jesus is the ultimate example. We need to follow the example of Jesus. Jesus was the best evangelist. He was an evangelist. Far more than, than anything else, I think Jesus was an evangelist. I, a, apart from being the son of God, I think he was an evangelist and he was out sharing the gospel. He was out doing the things of the kingdom. And he, you know, we're supposed to follow that example. Jesus gave us a modeled life of what life in the spirit should really look like. Jesus was an evangelist, but in the most biblical way, um, you know, evangelists nowadays look like somebody who preaches at conferences standing on stages, but I don't think that's really a, a, a biblical form of evangelism. I think evangelism is somebody who's going into regions and sharing the gospel and bringing the gospel to people out in the highways and byways and on the streets. That's an evangelist. You guys are all evangelists. I'm an evangelist. All of us are called to evangelism in some sort of way, and somebody who says they're not is totally mistaken, totally off base. Um, we're called to live like Jesus, and, and most of what he did was under an evangelistic anointing. That's what we have to understand. Um, you know, the, the word Christian actually, come, you don't see it much in the Bible, but it actually comes from the early church, and they called them Christians because they, it, it literally means little Christ, because they were such an example of Christ. They did, they walked the same way he walked. They did the same things he did. So they said, these, these guys are like little Christ. They're Christians. And, and we're supposed to model that example. So what was the example of Jesus? What example did Jesus set for us? And, and first of all, I would say when, when Jesus went out, he, it says in Acts 10, 38, he was anointed by God with the Holy Spirit to go about doing good, healing all those who are oppressed by the enemy or by the devil, it says. So, so let me tell you this. You and I are anointed by God with the Holy Spirit. You and I are supposed to be going around doing good. And we can, we can go around healing all those who are oppressed by the devil. That's what we're called to do. That's what Jesus did. That was his, that was one of his many examples he set for us. 
is that he was anointed by God with the Holy Spirit to go about doing good, healing all those who are oppressed by the devil. We're called to go and bring healing to those who are oppressed by the devil. That was the example of Jesus. That's what he did on the earth. That's, that's the example we need to follow is Jesus. Jesus is the example. But I think another thing to note about the life of Jesus and the example he set for us was the, comp the compassion he had in going. Um, he was moved with compassion by crowds. You know, he'd see a group of people and say, you know, he'd be moved with compassion and say things like, you know, they're like sheep without a shepherd, you know, and, and he was so moved and he was so, um, had such love for the people in front of him. And we need to have that too. We need to have love for the people in front of us and, and be moved with compassion for each and every person we come into contact with when we're out and about and when we're out doing evangelism we need to have a heart of compassion um but but most of you most of us want to see what we want to see the power that jesus had you know um we want to see we want to see the manifestation of power we want to see the manifestation of grace we want to see the the manifestation of healing and and um you know demonic deliverance we want to see those things right all of us do but i want to tell you sometimes i i think jesus came to break mindsets sometimes and sometimes the reason i i, I want when i was doing this training i want to answer the whys i guess why evangelism why going is because sometimes we need a change in mindset i think that's why jesus says you know repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand meaning change the way you think because the kingdom has been made available so he first thing he's saying when he's preaching is is repent change the way you think is sometimes i think our thinking and our thought process is the one thing that holds us back but also the one thing that stops us from seeing the manifestation of the kingdom of god and sometimes we just have to we just have to change the way we think and and so so we see jesus as this anointed man of god going in power going in authority healing the sick healing all those who are oppressed by the devil and saying man i want that too i want i want to see that too i know all of us do but let me talk to you about a few things that that will maybe change your mindset and maybe maybe produce a man a deeper manifestation of power and anointing when we go and and when we share the gospel and the number one thing is this is we have to take on the mind of christ what was the mind of christ this is something the Lord has been challenging me, challenging me in, in the past couple of weeks. Is we uh, we talk about the mind of Christ. We need the mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? Uh, uh, let, let me just share this passage with you guys. This is out of Philippians chapter two. We're gonna read verse five real quick, and this is out of the Passion translation. Um, it says this in verse five. It says, "And consider the example that Jesus, the Anointed One." has set before us let his mind become your motivation let his mindset become your motivation we take on the mind of christ what is the mind of christ he, he explains this in the following couple scriptures it says this in verse six he existed in the form of god yet he gave no thought to seizing equality with god as his supreme prize instead he emptied himself of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant he became human he humbled himself and became vulnerable choosing to be revealed as a man and was obedient he was a perfect example even in his death a criminal's death by crucifixion because of that obedience god has exalted him and multiplied his greatness and he has been given the name the greatest of all names i love that passage of scripture i don't know about you guys but i absolutely love that but jesus the mind of christ is a mind of humility it's a mind of of gentleness and lowliness it says that he yoked himself to meekness and lowliness he he hum, he yoked himself to a humble spirit and humbled himself to become a servant of men. I love the way Paul puts that passage of scripture because he talks about Jesus, think about this, the exalted God above all things, humbles himself to become a man. That's the ultimate act of humility, to sit in the highest seat of 
ever, you know, of the entire universe, creating all things and then humbling yourself to this form to take on the form of a human being. And, you know, one of the thing, one of one of the things that displays the humility of God is that he's invisible. You know, if, if you were that beautiful and majestic, you would want to be seen, wouldn't you? I don't know about you, but but I guess my pride would tell me that I want to be seen by people because look at how majestic and beautiful I am. But but one of the ways God humbles himself is not not revealing himself to us, to our physical eye, because he's humble. God has a humble spirit. And, and Jesus was a manifestation of humility. That was his mindset. His mindset was to be a humble servant. And like, think about that. That's the creator of all things. And, and not only did he become obedient to become a man, but he became obedient to, to be the lowest of men, to lower himself to a low seat, to be a servant of men. He didn't come to ser serve, but uh, didn't come to be served, but to serve. So Jesus puts himself in this seat of humility and then dies a criminal's death on a cross. This is God of the entire universe, the creator of all things. This was the mind of Christ. We need to have this mind. We need to be humble and we need to be yoked to gentleness and meekness and lowliness when we go. And we have to have his mindset. That's, that's one of the reasons I think he saw the manifestation of power was because he wasn't necessarily trying to glorify himself. He was trying to glorify the father. And, and so, so Jesus had this mindset. And let me tell you, you can't have pride and power. Um, you just, the, the two don't mix. Pride will always try to come and uproot power in your life. If, if you're prideful, it, it will come and uproot power in your life. Um, don't puff yourself up when God uses you in magnificent ways. Use it as a way to glorify him. And I promise you, you'll see greater manifestations of power through a humble spirit than you will through a prideful spirit that goes around boasting about what God used you to do. Um, we can't puff ourselves up when God uses us in these kind of ways. When he uses us to heal the sick and cast out demons, we can't become puffed up. And we have to remain humble and we have to remain to give all glory to the Father and not try to bring ourselves into, into I guess uh, we wouldn't do this intentionally, but to bring ourselves into a place of equality with God by saying in our mind and with our, you know, with our words, with our boasting that look at what I did because you didn't do nothing. You, you, you didn't do nothing. And maybe that's the reason God doesn't use some of us like that. I, I thought about this a few years ago. Um, you know, I, I want to see the dead raised, you know, and one of the things the Lord spoke to me in that season, he said, you know, why I don't, I don't use many people to raise the dead. And I said, why Lord? And he basically spoke to me and he said, because most of them would be too prideful to handle it is they would say, look at what I've done look at the way God has used me instead of using it to glorify the father. It would be, it would make us puffed up. We wouldn't be able to handle ourselves. So, so we need to yoke ourselves to humility. And the more we do that, I believe the more we're going to see the manifestation of power when we go out and we share the gospel is if we're willing to remain humble. Um, let me tell you this. And we talked about sharing testimonies. When we share testimonies of what God did out in the streets and stuff like that, or what he's done, you know, when we're doing evangelism stuff, you don't need to add to the testimony. Adding to the testimony is not glorifying God in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you, you don't need to add sauce, you know, don't sauce up the testimony. Sometimes, you know, people sauce up the testimony so much that there's, you know, somebody bites into it and realizes there's no protein in it. It's just sauce, you know, it's just sauce. It's just a... Uh, a, a totally blown out of proportion testimony and and we shouldn't do that that's just pride that's trying to bring ourselves into a higher seat saying look at me look at the way god used me and when we do that we're actually bringing ourselves it said jesus didn't do this jesus didn't didn't try to bring himself up to like even though he was god didn't try to bring himself to exalt himself into the same position as god when he walked the earth and that's why he said nobody's good but the Father, because he wasn't trying to exalt himself into, into equality with God. And when we do that, when we boast, 
what are we doing? We're, we're basically saying, look at me, look at me. And you're exalting yourself, bringing yourself into the position that God deserves because he's the one who did it, not you. You were just the vessel that the message came through. <clears throat> and, and let me put, put this, says it, this is one of the statements you'll find in all four gospels. So that means one thing. This statement... Jesus, Jesus must have really hit home with this statement when he was talking to the disciples because it was written in all the Gospels. And he said this, if we humble ourselves, he'll exalt us. But if we exalt ourselves, he will humble us. Right. So we have to have a humble spirit. And the second one, and this is the last one, and I'll let you guys go. Number two is this. Jesus was a servant. I love I love this. Is something I've been really digging into a lot is the servanthood of Jesus. Jesus was a servant. Jesus didn't come to, to be served, but to serve. And that's what we're called to do when we go out and do evangelism. We're going out to serve the world around us. Um, and sometimes it's not, it's not about, you know, it's not about serving. Um, it's not just about serving, I guess is what I want to say. Um, I've, I've heard a lot of leaders say things like this. Um, you know, I just didn't feel led or, or, you know, I, I didn't see a lot of fruit. I didn't see a lot of fruit when I went out. So I stopped going or, you know, I didn't feel led to do this or I didn't see fruit. And, uh, I, I just want to say, I, I'm going to be blunt, but that's nonsense. If, 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 if you're, a, if you're a gospel leader and you're a leader in the body of Christ, set Jesus set an example of servanthood and as leaders we should be servants like more than anything um it, Jesus was a servant he humbled himself to be a lowly servant and that is that is the example Jesus gave us and we go out and we serve the world and you don't have to feel led to be a servant you don't have to feel led you don't have to see fruit to go out and serve like that's if if that's your mindset then like then you missed it you know and <clears throat> let me say this and i said it last week <clears throat> but going back to humility is i just i just i, I just want to say this a humble spirit will say i want to fill the kingdom not just my sanctuary and our motivation can't be to fill our sanctuary. It needs to be to fill the kingdom. That's a humble spirit. A prideful spirit says, I'm doing this for my own, my own kingdom, if you will. What are you doing again? You're, you're exalting yourself into the position of God. You're trying to build your kingdom, not God. So we're here to build God's kingdom. That's what we're here to do more than anything. And Jesus did that by being humble and serving those around him. Um, Sometimes we're just there to serve. That's it. You know, we're not going to see a lot of fruit sometimes. Sometimes we're just there to simply serve people. And that that is okay. Because by serving, we're planting a seed, we're watering a seed, and we need to trust God that he will bring an increase. God is a servant. Remember, give a cup of cold water in my name. That's servant. That's being a servant. Let me read one more passage of scripture to you guys, and then I'll, I'll pretty much let you guys go. I just, I'll make a few points on it, and then we'll jump off here. Um, this is John 13. I'm going to read out of the pa Passion Translation again. Um, I'm loving the Passion Translation. If you guys have never read it or don't have it, get it. It's worth it. Um, John 13, 1 through 5 says this. Jesus knew that, that the night before Passover would be his last on earth before leaving this world to return to his father's side. All throughout his time with his disciples, G Jesus demonstrated a deep and tender love for them. And now he longed to show them the full measure of his love before their evening meal had begun. The accuser had already planted betrayal in the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Simon. Now Jesus was fully aware that the Father had placed all things under his control. Understand that. All things are under the control of Jesus at this point. And Jesus had fully surrendered and been fully obedient to God. And therefore, God has put everything under his control in this, in this moment. And what does Jesus do? This is what Jesus does when he has full control. 
for he had come from God and was about to go back to be with him. So he got up from the meal and took off his outer robe and took a towel and wrapped it around his waist. Then he poured water in a basin and began to wash the wash the disciples' feet, dirty feet, and dry them with his towel. Okay, God, first of all, Jesus, want, it says that he sh it continually showed them his deep and tender love for them. And, and that's what we're called to do, show deep and tender love for people, for those around us. That's what we're called to do. And it, it says that, but Jesus wanted to show the full measure of his love, the fullness of his love for them. And let me tell you this, washing somebody's dirty feet back then was like the lowliest of the servants, like the lowest of the servants washed people's feet when they came into the house. So Jesus is humbling himself to the most low place of any servant to wash their feet. Think about that with me. He's sitting at their feet, washing their dirty feet. This God just said, the Bible just said that he had given full control to Jesus at this point. Jesus has full authority. Jesus is filled with the grace and power in the anointing of God. And what does he choose to do? He chooses to kneel down and get in the lowest place and wash feet. So he could show them the full measure of his love. This is a servant heart. This is the heart of Jesus. Jesus was a servant. And by, he, and by his serving, he showed the full measure of his love. And that's what we're going out to do. We're going out to serve people. We're going out to wash the feet of the world so they can experience the love of God. They can encounter the love of God and experience the full measure of his love. That's what servants do. We lower ourselves to a low position so we could serve the world around us. The, the world needs a church who's willing to get down and wash feet. That's when I think we'll see the power and the anointing when we go out on the streets. You know, I think to answer the question, a question, why don't we see much more power? It's because I think people aren't going out to serve and, and they're not going out in a humble spirit. Sometimes they're going out wanting to just get the next good testimony or just to be able to say they go or to fill their sanctuary. That, that's not the reason to go. The reason to go is to, to fill the kingdom of God and to serve the world around us and show the full measure of his love the full measure of his grace and his mercy we're called to wash the feet of the world around us <clears throat> when when the world sees let me say this when the world sees the full measure of of love by us serving us washing their feet they'll experience the fullness of the love of christ and pete we will see fruit we will see a manifestation of power in the anointing of god the example Jesus set is a humble servant. That's the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is, oh, I have power. I have authority. I have control. Let me kneel down and wash feet. Let me lower myself to the lowest place. You know, wh I, who's, who's last will be first and first will be last. Is if Sometimes I think we just need to get in the back seat and we just need to lower ourselves and not be prideful and humble ourselves before God and let him use us as servants. I think that's the mind of Christ. That's the example of Jesus. So now we get to go and we get to go in power. We get to go in love and boldness. But we have to humble ourselves and serve the world around us. That's the example of Jesus. That's the way of Jesus. Let me pray for you guys real quick. Father, I just... We love you. We love the example that you've given us, that you're a, you're a humble, lowly servant. Help us, God, to humble ourselves, bring ourselves low so you can be exalted. And, and so we could wash the feet of the world around us and they can experience and encounter the full measure of your love. Jesus, we love you and we bless you. We give you all the glory and we pray, God, that you would use us in mighty ways that that regions and cities would be impacted with the gospel because of those who go, those who say yes to evangelism, those who say yes to going, those who humble themselves and serve the world around them. God, that's the example we want to be. Help us, God. Give us strength and let us see a great manifestation of your glory, of your power, of your love. 
Raise up humble servants in Jesus' name.